VIP Access Access. with Aniko on Africa Loud. Welcome to VIP Access Podcast this week. I'm excited to have an amazing artist on the podcast. I've been trying to have her on here, but she's been very busy traveling around the region, you know, creating beautiful music. So I'm very happy to introduce an African contemporary artist who comes from Kenya. Her name is Liboy, and her music is soothing and inspires change, good vibes, and just positivity all around. Welcome, Thank Liboy. You. That is quite an <laughs> intro. Thank you so much. How are you? I'm good. It's good to be here. Nice to see you. Oh, it's hey, so great really to see you. Hey, we really tried to have, have this sit down we for have. quite some time. And I'm time. so glad that we were always on the same page. Yes. We always knew we are going to have our yes. time, and yes. our time is now. So I wasn't really worried because I knew it was going to happen. That's amazing. Yeah, and here we are. That's amazing. <laughs> and um, just before we started recording this interview, I just almost got caught. You- <laughs> But so luckily, it hasn't I happened. Feel like, I feel like you're my, you're my sister because yeah. you literally said, me, you're like, don't yeah. accept that. Don't press yes on your yeah. email. Thank you. She literally almost got coined. Jeez. Yeah. But this is Nairobi. Right? When you're in a hurry and something is telling you something is wrong, don't do it. And it's funny you say that because do before I came through to this interview, I was actually listening to your 2023 EP, Safari. Yes. Yes. And uh, some of the messages in Safari are actually... Um, talking about some of the messages we're talking about here right now. Yeah. Like how you say this is Nairobi. Like when I listen to Safari, there are certain songs where you're actually saying like, be kind, mm-hmm. be a good individual. Mm-hmm. You know, good karma goes around as much as bad karma I goes think around. That's Upendo. Yeah, yeah, I right? think Upendo and Salama. But in Upendo, yes, I'm talking about um, how important it is to be kind we have to create space for everyone but also to be aware that whatever you do to other people if it's not good if it's good or you know it's definitely gonna come back to you so create that space in your heart where you have you're able to accept everyone the way they are Hmm. everyone the way they are now i'm just saying that and then i remember there's a time a friend of mine we were we were actually traveling to coming back to Kenya, to come back to Kenya. And then at the airport, she, my friend is left-handed. So at the airport, she's trying to give out her passport, of course, with her left hand. Mm. But then this person, the officer now, is he, he, she didn't want to accept it at all. And then she's telling her, why are you rude? Why, I'm even being nice with my tone and <laughs> intonation oh, and all no. these things. But she was offended and she refused to take it because to her... Being given something with, you know, left hand, it's rude. It's disrespectful. But to us, we're like, you can't change this person. This is how this person is. Why can't we just learn to accept people the way they are? Mm. If you're left-handed, if you come to me and tell me, oh, I am bisexual, or can we just learn and create space for everyone, for all of us to exist? Love has to be there. Wow. Yeah, love has to be there. Wow. (laughs) Upendo, Upendo, thank you for listening to Safari. <laughs> <laughs> Upendo is that song. It is that yeah. song. It mm. is that song. And also Safari, you know, carries some of this message. You know, life is a journey. Yeah, it is a journey. The ups and downs. Yes. And the different individuals that you're going to meet. But throughout yeah. the Safari, yeah. you have to figure out how to um, coexist with people. True. And in Safari, it's not entirely about the outward experience we have with people we meet or environment. It's also about the inward experience you have with yourself mm. because even within us, we have faces. True. Yeah? Yeah. We have faces. So it's all a journey. Whatever you're going through, it's a journey. You have to accept those every side of yourself mm. because we all have sides, right? Yeah. So accept it and make room for all these things. Sometimes yeah. it's, it even helps to know your dark side. Yeah. It helps. Yeah, a yeah, lot. Yeah. So it's important to know these sides, to know who you are, to understand. Mm. Self-realization is very important. Mm. And then it gives you room for growth. Wow. Then you are able to experience and even appreciate all your journey. Yeah. Every every bit of it. Wow. Yeah. That is so powerful. That's so powerful. And for everyone listening um, and watching, this is mm-hmm. exactly why I wanted to have Liboy on my on, on my podcast because I think we are so um, rich in terms of the different sounds, yes. different artists, but mm. every artist is individual to their own yes. you know, style, sound. Different and I unique. find you so unique in the Thank way you. you, not only in the way you sound and the way you perform, but mm-hmm. in the way you write. You know, the, you, there's, a, you. there's a theme 
to the kind of messages that you, mm. you sing about, you write about, you're very conscious about Thank you. human well-being. Yes, it's because yeah. to me, Aniko Aki, if we don't change how we are, inside ourselves it's going to be hard to change anything we're going to have multiple conferences of us talking about climate change we're going to have multiple conferences of us talking about extrajudicial killings because these things they come from somewhere they stem from somewhere it could be maybe traumas and then we pass it on to other people mm. but these traumas because we haven't healed it's reflecting, it's showing. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. if we take time and heal the traumas, it becomes very hard for us to pass these things to the environment, to each other. It becomes really hard. It becomes very hard for, for that to happen. So for me to be conscious, I keep questioning the human experience. I keep, mm -hmm. I keep questioning humanity yeah, yeah, because yeah. also there are things that do happen and personally i can't pretend to not see things mm. i just cannot and it can be personal experience it can be experienced from someone else these things they happen every single day like now your experience before you started the podcast before we started the podcast right? where are we going <laughs> where are we going because to nabiana and it's affecting other people. So we're not thinking about it. Sometimes we even say, ah, it's even better politicians how they still because it's not affecting us directly. Yeah, but yeah. it still does. Imagine it someone just does. cheating you yeah. and, 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 and stealing from you in broad daylight. Yes. Yeah. So, <laughs> so we have to so change. <laughs> yeah, we have to change these things. And also, I think when that happens, you become content with what you have. So ata kon artist ata ata kwa kipigia sim. Please listen to me. No, but but do you meet like your fans and listeners of Liboy and they say this kind of things like thank you for you know this song, this mm. album. Mm. I listen to your lyrics and you know they touch me somewhere. Yes, I even had that was after State of Being. State of Being was just that project that also helped me in a very huge way. And State of Being very was your way. first EP My first EP that came EP. out in 2022. 2022. Yes, November. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. But I also had feedback from people around that time. And there's a lady who texted me and told me, I started playing your music and then the children just came and sat in the middle of the room. Wow. Without playing, they weren't talking, they were just listening to the music. Amazing. That alone just touched me because it's something that could resonate with even children. It of was course. calming them down. And that's sometimes when we create music, we don't even know that this is the impact it's going to have. Mm. Honestly, most of the times we don't know that because for me, like state of being, I created it for myself. Mm. It was for my healing. Of course. Yeah, it was for my own healing. And then I decided, okay, let me just put it out there mm. and bless other people. And then it did. So the kind of feedback, and to me, that's the biggest achievement. Yeah, to me, that's... To me, that's making it. Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah. And I also feel like State of Being was an important um, moment in your career mm -hmm. so far in mm -hmm. the sense that it also made you quite discoverable among many audiences, yeah. including me. Yeah. I didn't even know Liboy before then, but when I saw you, in mm. this the artwork, you know, you looking up with the tribal makeup, yeah. really made yeah. me see this powerful young African mm. woman. You know, you embody that. And when I had the record, I was like, mm. really amazing. Yeah. yeah. I think I took so much time, like I said, because it was something for myself. Mm. <laughs> I was coming from a it's place almost of... like a, it was a diary of sorts. It was. I was venting. Mm. I was I was putting out <laughs> everything because hey, depression <laughs> is real. Yeah. <laughs> it's very real. And sometimes we, we think that it could be brought by something really huge. Mm. And also something that is huge to me to me might not be the same. So yeah, we all yeah, have yeah. different experiences, different levels, but then we just have to accept that this has happened to this person. So let's hold her hand or let's give her time yeah. if she needs it. But for me, I needed a place or a right way of venting it out. Mm. And music and writing at that period, because I wasn't talking to people, mm. I I didn't even know how to explain it to people for it to make sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you're depressed, you're having a spiritual awakening. I'm a Christian, but like I'm going through all these things, same time, and it's nothing is making sense to me. So I had to take time and accept it and be in that anger or be in it, feel it yeah, yeah, for yeah. me to be able to move on. So when it happened, I was writing so much and 
I think I was very intentional because I remember there's there are a few songs that I had to write, rewrite over like three times. <laughs> I'm sitting down, I'm listening to it, I'm like, nah, let me change. Mm. And then that's what happened. That was the whole process. So it took some time, but then it eventually happened. So I think when you say that it got to many people, it's mainly to me. I look at it as many people could relate to it. Mm. It was relatable. Yeah, yeah. most definitely. Yeah. Um, would you say that this was kind of like your first experience with depression? It was. Okay. Or maybe... It, maybe it had happened before, yeah. but that was when I was aware mm. of what was happening. I was aware that I needed um, time to, to, to experience what it, whatever yeah. it is I was experiencing. And also I think it was a, f it was a face. And also I've noted that it's, it's something that reoccurs in different shapes and forms. Mm. Yeah, it's... Not depression, but like mm. a face where you're confused. Yeah. And I think it prepares you for something great. Yeah. 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 You just have to embrace it, accept it, mm. and then figure out, okay, so this happened for me to learn this. Yeah. Or this happened for me to get this. So it's something that reoccurs. Yeah. Reoccurs. So this year I experienced something. It was almost the same, but I was like, hmm. So it's not until like if you're depressed or if you are having a rough time yeah. it happens once it's going to happen again and again mm -hmm. you just need to learn from all these things yeah. and know how to figure out the okay. rest okay yeah. okay um i mean we are both females existing in an industry which is heavily male dominated yes. and i always say it's not a problem of just the music industry or entertainment but it's a global problem. It's a global <laughs> Almost problem. any industry, and not just industries, but generally speaking, yeah. um, you not know, just male, at, right? Yeah. Male, not males just, are yeah. just dominating, dominating everywhere, and 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 not to say that uh, they're not women out there doing stuff, but generally, um, just just so many men around, and mm. women not being seen enough or hard enough. Um, what has been your experience? You know. Um, operating in an, in this kind of industry. It is tough. <laughs> Tea for tough. <laughs> Tea for tough. And it's just sad that women, we have to work even twice as harder as men to find our space for us to break that glass ceiling. And it's weird when you do something by yourself and then people ask you, oh, so then what did you do? To get because people have that notion of oh, oh you got together with this okay. person for yeah, this yeah, to yeah. happen yeah they just can't I think it's the society mentality that we have to change that we can also just do it without you know having sexual favors mm. or you know so for me it has been really hard I wouldn't even lie because I've gone through so much in this industry um, but then most of it happened also when I wasn't doing music professionally like full time that was when i experienced most of it okay. because now i think things have changed i just know the places or the people to interact with and i also now i'm able to set boundaries and all that mm. but before it was really hard um there's even an album that i recorded an entire album with nine songs mm. that i never got because of this foolishness <laughs> Because of foolishness. And it sucks that you've spent so much time, resources, you've poured out your of soul. Course. And then you don't get it because you refuse to do A, B, C, D. Mm. Yeah. And sometimes for me, because I have a group of female artists, I like to call it a collective, where we sit down sometimes to just talk and share experiences because we believe that's another way of changing the narrative when we talk to each other. Of course. Yeah, because then I know this person went through this. I'm able to handle it this way. Mm. But it's it's very saddening to hear all of them speaking of the same. And talk about the pay. Pay is also not the same. Um, there's a time a friend of mine called Willie Oeba. I'm going to because this man deserves his flowers. <laughs> <laughs> a friend of mine, Willie really, Oeba, who's a poet, um, we were working on something and then I just happened to ask, so what have you quoted? And then he told me his figure and I'm like, and what have I, what have I quoted? So he told me sometimes just talk to fellow artists mm. who are also men to figure out how they maneuver and it helps a lot. So if you find men who are willing to share this kind of information, these are the people that we want. 
We want more of them. Yeah. We want more really or yeah. because that really helped me. So sometimes you okay, can stage you have a different pay compared to men and imagine me, you probably quoted the same but then the negotiation was done. I don't know if it's a thing where we don't know how to negotiate. I don't think so because now it's changing. Mm. Now it's really changing. But there are so many dynamics and aspects that make it hard for women. Um kuna sana semangati aki aki niliona mdem flani stage aki perform na liko amebeba mtoto me I didn't enjoy it. In my head I'm I'm just <laughs> this woman is doing the most yeah. to provide for that child yeah. and you're here telling me I didn't enjoy it because mtoto analia It's wrong. It's very wrong. We are all in this space. Mm. Again, upendo, we have to coexist. Yeah. Create space for each other. I mean, it doesn't mean because I'm a woman, I have to when I have children, it doesn't mean that that's the end of my career. It doesn't mean that. So, it's just a matter of people knowing that we all need each other. Mm. Men alone cannot exist. they won't they will exist yes but then they won't be able to do so much we need each other yeah 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 we need yeah, each other yeah. yeah and i feel like we also need more and more f- females in the music business yes so i have um this initiative called she is it's very it's a baby still a baby but uh, step by step we're going to get there soon um but it's called she is which is a collective of female artists in the art industry at sector let me just say that and we've come together to create a safe space a serene environment for women to thrive mm. women creative women to thrive mm. and the reason why we did that was because we just saw there was a gap um it's an idea that came last year 2023 mm-hmm. and beginning of 2023 and it was after a good friend of mine called Muhonja and I we sat down and like I told you we were exchanging ideas and talking and experiences and challenges and then we were like oh so we're not alone <laughs> Because now after talking to her, I realized I'm not alone. And she realized she wasn't alone. Mm. So we wanted to try and change the narrative and come up with a database of women who we can also mentor so that they can be able to handle their situations differently. We can have, um, um, what are they called? Um, financial, financial classes so mm. that they know how to handle that better. And Olivia is very, very, Olivia Ambani, she's very good at that. And she's, always willing to share the little knowledge that she has so we were like uh, we have all these people we can reach out to them they are willing to be a part of this so why not do this Amazing. have financial classes just you know develop mm. develop their skills and their empower talent them empower them knowledge. exactly exactly capacity building that's amazing yeah. wow so she is um and right now we are we have i have shiki shiki is a part in the dj and a dancer she's so many things and a producer <laughs> spontaneous is also a poet nail daughter nail daughter is a reggae artist mm-hmm. mohonja is in it and then there's a filmmaker called agneta so we are the brains behind she is mm-hmm. but then hopefully we're going to have more people such that even when we're not there it's still going to continue yeah that's yeah. amazing yeah. have you already had some uh, gatherings We, we've not yet because now it's the ideation and the conceptual phase so mm. we've had gatherings amongst ourselves okay. yeah to just make it solid mm. enough to be able to start but um I'm very aware that Dunga Hill is interested in helping us with this mm. Dunga Hill camp in Kisumu yes, yes. yeah they are very much interested That's in uh, connecting us with the with their artists in Kisumu mm. so that we can be able to have these conversations with them try and empower each other because even us as we do it we also learn so much from other people of course yeah. and and i mean if anyone is listening and watching and wants to be part of this yeah you know feel free to contact Livoy yes. directly or me but i think yeah. this is something that is necessary for the industry and mm-hmm. sometimes someone is watching and wants to be part i think yes. they could definitely reach out to you right yes 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 they can definitely reach out to me mm-hmm. uh, via email on gayosharon@gmail.com or social media platforms at liboy um yeah we're willing to have anyone any if you're if you're a creative a woman 
<laughs> You're welcome. Come join. Come yes. join the bandwagon. Come join. Yes. Come join. Is there a social media page for she is? Not yet. There's gonna be one. Yes. Soon. There's gonna. So be we should one just follow soon. Liboy for the yes, updates. Yes. That's there's gonna dope. be one soon. But at least now it'll be a database for women by women mm. and of women. Fantastic. Yeah. Fantastic. So I want to come back to you, mm -hmm. to your music, to your um, inspirations. Yeah. And we were also having a little chat before we started this podcast and I was asking you, do you have Tanzanian roots? And you were like, actually not. <laughs> no, <laughs> I'm 100% Kenyan and Nunje <laughs> for that matter. Yes. But when I listen to your songs, like you really do tap into our Swahili culture, mm -hmm. you know, which is, um, is, is part of our Kenyan culture. But I think yeah. a lot of Kenyans, especially in the urban towns, they look at Swahili culture as something for the coastal people or Tanzanians. But it's, it's us. Yeah. It's our culture. So there was even, we are Swahili people. We are. <laughs> so sometimes I hear people speak and they're like, oh my God, I can't speak Swahili. That thing. I can't. That thing so let me continue really with my emb English. It's embarrassing. Yes. And I'm like, how and are people proud to say I don't speak Swahili and mm -hmm. I can't? Like, it's such an embarrassing thing to even yeah. start discussing. And I'm just like, I want people to change that, you know, and start speaking your language, you know, in, start learning you know, your in language. In primary school and high school, we only had one day to speak Swahili. Imagine a week has five days because now we're removing weekends, yeah? So five days you're going to school, but you have one day to speak Swahili. And then all the other days, if you're found speaking Swahili, you're given that... The disc. Yes. You're given a disc or a rotten egg yes. that you have to hold the entire day. But we also had that, yes. the disc. So wrong. Because you know, just what like it's doing is it's erasing culture and making it look like it's embarrassing to speak Swahili. Who, whoever introduced that? I because it no looks idea. like so many schools were doing yes. that. We're you from know. different generations. Right? But still, I experienced that in the experience. And where did you go to school? <laughs> Our Lady of Fatma. Where? It's in Karyobangi North. See, yeah. I, and I was all the way in Molo. And, and that was still you. happening in the Rift Valley. It's it's something that has to stop because that's who we are. Yes, we have the mother tongues that comes first, but then Swahili is the national language and yeah. that's how we can relate with each other. Yeah, so yeah, when yeah. we accept English and look at it like it's everything, we are erasing our Swahili culture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So for me as a musician, because before, before I got really serious with this music. It's, <laughs> so there is the thing with, um, I was talking to a friend of mine the other day and he was saying, if music is inside you, no matter what you do, you're going to come back to it eventually. Oh, that's because beautiful. that is your purpose. That is beautiful. You can never ignore it. You can never, you're going to go around in circles doing all these other things, but not knowing that you're wasting your Maybe not wasting your time because you might get some skills from doing all these things. But then you'll go around in circles looking for your purpose. But then the minute you realize that gift you were given, that gift that runs inside you, regardless of whether you've gone to school to learn about it or not, that gift is what is your purpose. That will mm -hmm. show you your purpose. So for me, I did so many things, but then without knowing... That music is, you know, my thing, my thing, my thing. But without, uh, what was I going with this point? Now we have to. <laughs> you had asked me something. <laughs> we were talking about Swahili the culture, Swahili heritage yes. and culture. Yeah. So for me, before I knew what my purpose was, I was singing so many. I was just doing anything provided I was hard. Oh, so that's what you mean. Yeah. Even in terms of music, before Even you were just of, Yeah, doing I was just experimenting and exp which is important it for is artists. important it very is important. important yeah because in the process you get to know what suits you what, what you works like. for you yeah. what represents you mm. what speaks for you exactly so it's very important and um for me when i started being intentional with it i was doing my research and all these things but then um, the music industry and the history in Kenya changed at some point. Mm. It could be because of so many things. And you, do you know that now if you want to get uh, music data, it's not in one place. It's scattered. It's Everywhere. all over the it's, place. It's the hardest thing to come to, to, to put together, by the yes, way. Yes, it's all it over the, the place. It is the hardest thing. We have to appreciate people like Ketebul because at least they are trying to, right? to archive these exactly. things in one place. Yeah. But it's very hard for 
people or upcoming artists or people from my generation to get information or data because yeah. it's no it's nowhere to be it's found. Difficult. Yes. But then back then the Swahili culture uh, we had the sound in mm. Kenya that also gave birth to so many, many sounds. other sounds yes. and genres. Yes. But Tarab, Tarab was there. Tarab was a good representation of a Swahili culture mm. back then. But then at some point, Dekakujika disappeared. Mm. So now we have all these things. Mm. But for me, because I try to, when I go back to my roots and I believe in our culture, um, I try to create what. I, cre I, I take from what was there mm -hmm. to create the now and possibly the future. Mm. Yeah, so I can't ignore the fact that I am Liboy. And as Luya we say, Liboy. Liboy. <laughs> Liboy. <Yes. laughs> yeah. So I'm Liboy from Huisero. Uh -huh. But then I'm also um, a woman from this kind of time, from these yeah, times. You, yeah? are de ad, you are a descendant exactly. of the Tarab music and exactly. culture. Exactly. Right but then I'm so. also supposed to shape the future yeah. in the narrative. Yeah. So it has to be seen in the music. And that's why I think when you listen to it, you it hear does. a lot of Swahili culture. No, and, it's yeah. so amazing. And, and, and I was also thinking some of your music gives me a little bit of kind of desert sounds, mm -hmm. like, because there's a lot of the, the, the guitar. Yeah acoustic guitar mm, influence and yeah. it gives, it's a very similar not very similar but it's a little um similar to um some kind of mali music mm. sounds and for me growing up listening to a lot of uh, malian music because my sisters always loved music and they introduced me to all this music around the continent i always used to listen to that music and be like why can't we make such <laughs> lovely, lovely music, music? And now when I listen to Liboy, I might listen to Akot Jumadi. Yeah. I'm like, yes. imagine now I don't even have to go listen to the Malian music. I'm getting that music here, here from our very own here artist. in Kenya. So I really want to give you your flowers and thank you, thank for, you so for, much. for what you've done. You don't realize it, mm -hmm. but this music is music for the long term. Yeah. You know, it's yes. the music you would love to hear last year, this mm -hmm. year, in the future. In five it's years It's the music time. that if anybody discovered around the continent, they'll be like, I'm proud. Mm. I'm proud. This sounds African. Yeah. It's just amazing. It's, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. It's it's Afri it's African, but also we need to um acknowledge that Africa we are one. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. you can go to TZ to mm -hmm. Tanzania and find some things that you know are not far from your culture back mm. home. You can go to Ghana and find the same thing. Mm. Like there are things that are just Re they resemble where you're from. Yeah, it yeah, could yeah. be the environment. It could be how people are. Yeah, it yeah, could yeah. be some culture or beliefs. You know, we, we're just one. So mm. we borrow from each other either way. Mm. We just borrow from each other. Africa is one. And we need to also be able, because we are the, um, the, the, the healers, yes, and we are also the messengers. So we have to communicate that we have to come together and appreciate our diversity. And what happens when we come together? Massiveness. Yeah. yeah. Massiveness. Wow. Yeah. Amazing. Amazing. So we spoke a little bit about State of Being, mm -hmm. um, Safari, the yeah. EP. Um, what's the plan for 2024 in terms of new records? Because it yeah. looks like in the past two years, there was something that came out around mm -hmm. November. Oh, around November. <laughs> I have yeah. a thing now. <laughs> You didn't even realize it. <laughs> <laughs> now I have a thing. It's November. Um, but this uh, 2024, I have so much. Um, the plan is to always grow and to express myself. Um, and I'm really looking forward to... Because I'm, I'm working on two different projects. Mm -hmm. One is a sound that is more electronic and house. And it's very new to me. But it's something I'm really into and I'm... I'm drawn into it to nice. try and explore. Uh, but also, again, it's another way of just trying to, yes, express yourself, but differently. Yes. Yeah. And I love exploring my sound. I love exploring it. It just makes me feel so alive. That's amazing. <laughs> so alive. So there is that one and there is another one. I have this thing of wanting to learn traditional instruments from Africa but mainly, mostly from Kenya. Mm. So I have this, um, I'm determined to go back home and discover almost all the traditional instruments that I can find mm. and see what I can do with oh, that. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's a cool project. Yeah. That is that project that I'm like, 
it has to be done. So 2024. That's a very cool yeah. project. You should probably um, collaborate with Kasiva on that. She's doing she also the has same a thing. thing for because she's been, she's been asking me for a uh, different, because I have this uh, instrument called Udu. It's a pot. You know it? I've heard of it. Yeah, it's a pot. Uh, it's originally from Nigeria and India. Mm. But in Nigeria, it's women who used to use it mm. because it was a water vessel. Okay. So they would go to fetch water and then it would be halfway. Uh -huh. And then when they played it, it had this interesting deep sound you just have to listen to it so now it has they we reinvented it it has a hole on the side mm. that if you play it without water it still has the same effect okay. or same sound so but yeah and but you she, have the udu i have it where did you it. get the udu i got it from tz fantastic yeah from TZ. yeah yeah because kasiva was on this podcast last season and she really spoke about mm. the fact that instruments are like not instruments but percussions yeah well traditional instruments are like the vessel of they are. and the foundation of they our are. music, they sound, really industry, identity. Yes. And she was like, I can't just pick up a drum and start playing it. Yeah. You know, I have to talk to it. Yeah. I have to figure out how do I tune it to work with another instrument. Exactly. And you, she was like, when I meet with fellow singers and they have instruments, our instruments also have to have a meeting. Exactly. <laughs> and speak to each other. Yeah. I was like, that's deep, man. Yeah. So I'll definitely look for Kasiva. But yeah. that's, that's a project that I'm really, really interested in doing. Really interested in doing. That's yeah. dope. That's I think dope. it's also because I'd want to go back and um, just dig deeper into my cultural roots. Yeah, I'd love to do that. That's dope. Yeah. I mean... I mean, I mean, I I feel I feel the same for myself. I just feel like growing up, I don't know. There was just a lot of Western media mm. around us, yeah. And it ha and we had to take it upon ourselves to, you know, reintroduce ourselves to our own culture. True, you know, so true. it's up to you and me and yeah. the person listening to be the one to go back to yeah. their shags and discover yes. what were the sounds, who are the artists. And identity. It's so hard to get that information anyway. Yeah. It's not something you can Google. No. It's something but you can go you, on the ground and talk true. to your elders. You Very know. true. Very true. Elders. Because now, um, Tabu, Tabu from Ketebo. Yes. Yes. We had to sit down and he kept telling me, there are things you can't find in books. Yeah. There are things you can't find in on the internet. Mm. There are things you just have to go back and research qua ground yeah. and get the yeah. answers. Yeah. So these are some of those. <laughs> right. Yeah, this is one of, the, <laughs> of those that needs you to go back and research. But another project that I'm looking forward to uh, working on or having this year, 2024, is um, having a tour. Yes. Yes. I'm really, the last, uh, in Europe, a tour in Europe. The Fantastic. Last time, the last time I had... Um, a tour in Europe, it was actually in two countries, in Norway and Spain. But then I was in school, and I was in school in Norway, a music school. So Ooh. it was courtesy of the school. It wasn't really, because I think it was part of the learning, mm. uh, part of the education. But now I'd like to do it um, now as Liboy. Yeah. yeah, and I think you have everything that it takes to tour internationally. Yeah. Because your sound itself really does sound like an... an, an um, like a, a full rounded mm. sound, and mm. I can imagine like with the, with a band, yeah, it would sound so amazing. You know, yeah. you have the voice, you have the persona. Thank you. Mm. Um, so I wish you well. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. We pray. <laughs> I wish but you well. But the aim is to just go out and share the music yeah. and connect the message, and connect to people, connect with them, allow art to connect with them as well. Because sometimes. Imagine you can connect to someone's music, but not the person. Mm. And that's completely okay. Mm -hmm. Because either way, the message is going to get home. If it's through my music, that's okay. If mm. it's through us just having having a conversation, it's also still okay. Yeah. 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 Any other message or thing that you'd like to say and we haven't talked about? I would just like to say thank you. Aww. To you, first <laughs> of all. <laughs> to, I grew up watching her. On live television, <laughs> Grapevine. Grapevine was it. it because, yeah. so also this thing of the media not creating space for this kind of sound 
has been in existence for quite some time yeah. because your station your program yeah. what you were doing yeah. was at that point i don't remember seeing what you were doing in other stations no not at all yeah so we knew every monday yeah. was every, every monday, monday night we and, knew um, if you want to catch all the events in Nairobi, just tune in. As a matter of fact, so many artists started there. Like yeah. Salty Soul, you know, their first interview was at KBC, thanks to me. Yes. Um, Calligraph, yeah. I was the first person to interview Calligraph. Mm. When we used to go cover his events when he didn't really have a song that would be on radio. Mm. He had mixtapes, but they were not playing anyone on, on radio. Yeah. So then um, that kind of artist couldn't get an interview on radio. You know, you don't have a radio song. Mm. Who are you? So he was getting interviews on Grapevine. It still goes on up to now. Right? Yeah, up to oh, date. It still bad, goes bad on. Bad habits that yes, had. Yes. You know, Octo Pizzo, um, mm. also the first person to interview him. When he released nice. like his first video um, on top. And now look at all of you. Right? <laughs> So it was a great, great show. Yeah. And I really, really loved it. Mm. I still really love it. Mm. I just had to leave because obviously you, you crave for change. You crave to reach different audiences, audiences in different ways. Exactly. But it taught me so much in terms of what's happening in the industry. Mm. Where are the gaps? Mm. And that's why up to date, I'm still conscious to fill in the gap. And I think one important gap always has been the storytelling. Yes. You know, who's telling the, art, the story of the artists who are not on the mainstream? Yes. There's some artists like Yaba, who's also on this podcast last season. Amazing he's, artist. You see him perform, he's like a god out <laughs> there, you know, but then you don't hear him on radio. So we need to give the space, space for all these different kind of artists and individuals. No matter yeah. who you are, however your style is, you deserve a voice, yeah. you deserve a platform. And we're all unique. Yeah. And there is something we have we yeah. we offer. All yeah, of us. Yeah. We're different, but there's always something to offer. Yeah. 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 Always. So thank, so thank you, you so, much. so much for having this <laughs> space and for having me here. Thank it's you. It's been a so pleasure. Much. It's and been such a pleasure. Yes. And also thank you to my family, my supporters. Yeah. If I I don't think I could be I could do this without the support that I'm getting from from my people. Yeah, from my community. Yeah. It's immense and I do feel it and I'm so appreciative of that. And I also want to say thank you so much to Keep Ki Ki Pepeo Ki Agency. Keep Pepeo. Woot woot, you my You know, fam. for even making this interview happen <laughs> yes. and just doing a good job um, over and above. Yes. So, um, amazing, amazing individuals. Thank you. I've always loved the way they presented you when mm. you had your um, the State of Being EP. Yes. Up until now, I, I love it. Thank you. And uh, I wish you well. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. We'll definitely meet again and again. Habisa, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, that was Liboy, the amazing Liboy right here on VIP Access and like we told you, Qua Ground, V20 different. different. So you need to come out of your space, wherever you are, go to the ground, connect with your culture and your roots and your people. We'll be back next week with yet another amazing guest who's going to inspire us to connect with our roots. Thank you, Livoy. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you so much. VIP Access Season 4 is proudly supported by the Australian High Commission.